What's up? So, how's it going? TR artwork. Hey, what is up? Dude, uh, you did a crazy good painting in Russia the other day. That is so good. That was crazy good. That guy you took uh, that course with, um, he's a really, really good painter. I don't know if he's from the uh, Rebin Institute, but woof, you kicked ass, man. That's a, that's a kick-ass painting, an awesome model, and I'm sure he's like a great painter and like a killer instructor. So congrats, congrats on that because that's a killer good painting. I'm sure you got like a ton of great info on on that workshop and and that's what workshops are supposed to be you know just like this really concentrated um kind of uh place where you can gather information and and you know maybe you get one or two workshops a year and you're set you know for that whole year so awesome um so i told you guys i was going to do all of these <clears throat> which is going to be a lot of hard work um oh and by the way he's only 24 oh my god fuck that you know, I take it back. Fuck him. He's too good for his own sake. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> so I, um, I'm going to do these. Um, I'm going to paint these. I like the uh, drawings, but, you know, I want to paint them. So, um, so we're going we're to see how that goes. Uh, I'm going to try and paint these two today. So, um, and I'm choosing this, this palette, this very kind of simple palette. So it's... Uh, uh, titanium white, yellow ochre, cad red, medium, crimson, alizarin crimson, uh, raw umber, and ultramarine blue. So it's going to be kind of a grayish palette. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm not going to be able to focus on the palette because um, I want to I focus on these two in the camera. And uh, that's it. And as a heads up, I'm currently uploading my first little video on like my first little YouTube video. Um, and I hope that, and I hope that works out because um, I'm, I'm, I really want uh, that channel to kind of take off. And right now it's really rough. Like my, that first video is just kind of, it's, there's nothing special about it. Um, it's actually a more, um, I, I, I guess it's not that comprehensive, but uh, it's a more detailed kind of process of how I went about doing that, that exercise I did with the uh, grayscales, um, with the uh, values in the grayscale, with the really compressed value uh, scale. So uh, I'm going to upload that. That's probably going to be up tomorrow, but I'll let you guys know to see how, um, how, how that works out. So uh, let's get to it. Um, let's get to work on these two. And see how that goes. No, no, no lo he abierto, David. Estoy, estoy montando el primer video y pues es, es eh, en este momento lo estoy montando. Son como 40 minuticos. Eh, y, y pues vamos a ver, es, es muy crudo, o sea, es súper sencillo. Pero, pero pues por algo se comienza, entonces vamos a ver. Vamos a ver cómo nos va. Good eh, night. <laughs> Um, so we'll see. Let's start with this one and we'll see how that goes. Um, I hope I don't mess these drawings up. <laughs> They're pretty nice. So, yeah. So that's going to be, um, that's going to be tough. And you know that I, one, one way you can turn, you can, um, tell that I love to paint is knowing that, um, right now there's, um, there's a match, there's a World Cup match going on and I am painting. So, I don't know what's wrong with me, but, you know, <laughs> I'll work around that. Okay, let's go. Let's see. Um, so I, I want these to feel like, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you've, if you've guys seen it, but those line decker um, uh, studies that are just probably even more amazing than his, his paintings. His paintings are, like, incredible. Like, the final illustrations are incredible. But the, um, the studies are just insane so these i i kind of want these to have that feel not that style because he definitely had like a very very particular style but just to feel like uh the 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 purpose of these is really just 
to uh, study hands. Um, they're not really meant to be like these, these beautiful uh, little paintings. So I want to go through them, um, I don't know if quickly or like haphazardly, but, but I, I don't want to stay too long, like a little too long on, on these. Uh, right now it's uh, nil nil. Excellent, excellent. I watched the one in the morning, um, Uruguay, um, Egypt, but and that one was tough to watch because, of course, you know people from South America. We are very, um, you know, we are uh, brothers in in football. So I'll I'll root for um, for Uruguay, but uh, I also I'm a Liverpool fan. And I'm a huge like Mo Salah fan, so I was I was hoping that I was I knew that he wasn't going to play, but uh, I was hoping for Egypt to do well. But tough match, good match, really good match. Both of them were really good. So, um, so yeah, so you guys can keep me updated. La gente viendo el mundial, yo viendo a Nicolás Uri. Sí, patético. <laughs> Qué triste todos. <laughs> No importa, no importa. Vamos a tratar de hacer una buena pintura entonces para los que los que quieren sacrificar eh, mundial por por ver pintar eh, unos dedos. <laughs> so again, I don't want to take a long time on these. I'm hoping, hoping. I mean, this is me just hoping that that I can. Um, Describe them well enough, and and I want some detail in them also because I, I love the uh, particulars in in the uh, in the hands. They they give the hands like a ton of uh, personality. But you know, I'll know if I'm just uh, staying way too long in these. I'll um, I can kind of gauge that and know if I'm just getting a little too distracted with uh, with detail. As un retrato de James. <laughs> No ese, eh, ¿cómo se llama este tipo? Nuestro eh, Duchamp. Eh, Barrios hizo una... Yo no lo he visto. Un, como una... ¿Qué será eso? Una um, litografía, lo que, lo que sea, de, de James para, para darla gratis en la revista. Eso lo habían hecho hace tiempos. En los periódicos, en un periódico, un artista había hecho eso hace tiempos. Como que... Hacia una imagen y creo que la después tenían un sitio donde en, a, hacían una sesión o un encuentro ahí donde él podía firmar todas las todas las, las páginas de la revista para que se entendieran como originales y, y pues es de James el, el la imagen es James entonces ya ya Barrios hasta volvió al pobre James conceptual ya no podemos hacer nada What was the name of the artist inspiring these Oh, um, J.C. Leindecker, the, um, he's a, a very, very famous American illustrator. Uh, he was doing covers, I think they overlapped at the same time as, as Rockwell, but I think he was a little older than Rockwell, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I don't think so. Hey, Lena. Lena is killing with her paintings, too. You're painting like crazy good, like, damn, there's just way too many good painters. In this world, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, so Leindecker was. I think he even as as many covers as as um, as Rockwell did, and maybe I'm mistaken, but I always heard this that uh, Leindecker um, painted more covers of the uh, Post than than Rockwell. I don't know why. I have a feeling, Kyo Alejandra. I have a feeling that that's um, that I'm not mistaken about that, but maybe I am. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't know that I, I, I think I heard that throughout, like, um, throughout school, people would tell us that, so. Saludos desde Argentina, muy bien, sus hermanos uruguayos, buen partido hoy, muy buen, muy buen partido hoy. Suárez jugó como un paquete, pero bueno, igual les alcanzó, les alcanzó para, para, para la victoria. You're so, you're so kind to me. No, dude, what are, what are you talking about? Like, you deserve all the credit. Like, you're painting like crazy, Lena. That's, that's really, really cool. You have, like, this 
immediate, this very, very immediate way of painting. It's, I, I know that's like, there's probably like a ton of hard work in it, but you have this, this, um, this way of working where you kind of mix, uh, just drawing marks with painting. Um, I don't know if that explains it well enough. And it feels just very, very immediate, just really, really fresh. So, and it, and it feels, um, it doesn't feel like you're looking for a style. So it feels very, um, very uh, genuine. So now congrats. Always, always willing to give props to people that are doing like a great job. So uh, how do you choose between the light on these hands, since those hands were studies probably from life? No, no, no. I'm going to paint these. Like, uh, people, people are always really concerned about the decisions I take right now and how they were, um, you know, how I go about them. You know, for these, I have, I, I have photographs. I have, uh, I have photo, a photo reference. But a lot of times people are like concerned about that because they feel, oh, that's, uh, you know, I'm not interested in that anymore. Like there's a, there's a photographic reference for these. Like, uh, I, I know this is so hard to, um, I know sometimes it's hard to convince people of these things, but trust me, I would, I don't think like people that have seen me paint, I would do the exact same thing if I was working from life. Like for me, there's no mystery involved in painting these from photographs or from life. I even like um, approach a lot of my paintings as if I was painting them from life. Like I try to um, remind myself of every bit of experience that I've had from life so that I can kind of channel that and, and sort of put an imprint into these um, references that I have. Um, I've noticed that people are hung up on that because they, they feel that working from a photograph creates this very photographic um, image. And in terms of like um, process, I've also noticed that there's a lot of people out there that are not engaging in drawing. I don't know. I don't want to say the way you're supposed to do, but you know, a lot of people are either um, gritting up their drawings or they're um, or they are uh, just, you know, plain like transferring their drawings, like, you know, with um, carbon paper or with, you know, uh, they're projecting their drawings or, I don't know. There's, um, I feel that unfortunately, I mean, that's totally fine if that's this sort of image that you want to create. But unfortunately, um, would that actually, um, what that actually creates in, the, in, in us as a community is the sense that um, drawing is something that we should be scared of and that we do all those efforts in order to not, you know, not mess up. Uh, and to me, that's kind of sad, to, if I have to be really, really honest, that people are starting to be uh, so, so scared of drawing that instead of just putting in the time and investigating and just trying to learn about themselves through drawing, they are giving up very easily just so that, um, you know, a method can, can almost get rid of the problem very quickly. So, um, so I, I feel that that's very sad. I mean, just as a personal preference to be, to be totally honest. Um, there's, there's so much that, um, that is almost a very fundamental, uh, part of, of, uh, the process of learning, you know, the process of being a, a young artist when, when you sort of encounter yourself, you know, this, this person that's trying to do something to very quickly realize that you don't have the ability to do it. And then you have to, you, you, you understand that you have to push yourself to get better and better and better. Um, I feel that that gets lost, you know, and to me, that's such an important part of, of the process of just, um, not just getting, gaining ability, but just understanding yourself and understanding how you look at things and understanding how you start to translate those things. And it's super cool just to know, um, I'm, I, there's people here that have known me for years 
and they could probably tell how I've changed and developed through, through time and maybe how my interests have also kind of changed through time. And I think that those things are, are um, they're only plausible if, you know, if you give yourself the chance to grow, if you give yourself the chance to, uh, to make mistakes and to learn from them and to, um, and to attempt to understand from, you know, to gain understanding from those mistakes. But for some reason, there's so many people that right now don't, they, they see things in, in very binary, binary terms, like, you know, you either, you either don't have the drawing abilities or you do, and if you don't, it's okay, you can kind of fake it and just very quickly translate that drawing into your, uh, your surface, you know, and, and then just make a picture. And I think uh, that I, I probably, if, if I have to pinpoint it, I think that that's where I am, I, I understand myself uh, very differently from, from those artists. Because uh, I, don't, I don't want to anticipate making a picture. You know, I don't, I don't want to, like my, my goal is not to make a picture. Um, that doesn't weigh heavily on me. I have to say that it did for many, many years. You know, this idea that it is through pictures that people identify us. It is through, through, through the manner in which we paint that people will know that it is us, you know, that they're looking at. And, you know, we, we grow very nervous when, we, um, when we're younger and we, and we try, you know, we, we have to think, wow, there's like thousands of great painters outside. How do I make myself different and how do I differentiate myself from them? And the truth is, uh, we we start making sacrifices and sometimes really big sacrifices in order to just understand ourselves as as being different. And um, I I don't I don't care that much about painting pictures anymore, like images anymore. Because when you think about images, you're thinking about um, inevitably uh, you're thinking about and and maybe you don't think this is conscious but I promise you it's there. You start thinking about, well, what's popular nowadays? What are other people painting? How, how is everyone receiving those paintings? You know, um, how are the uh, sales for those paintings? You start thinking about a ton of things that are attached to image making. Um, and part of, of my painting process, of part, or part of where my painting process has taken me, is to just not care about those things that much anymore. Um, so it's very, like I've always said, it's very liberating. And uh, when you position yourself in that, in you know, in that point where you're just painting for because you're satisfying this very, very, very primal need to paint, um, you realize that um, you know you're just you have access to a bunch of things that don't weigh down on you and you can enjoy you can enjoy your paintings a lot more you can enjoy the making of your painting a lot more you can enjoy learning from your painting a lot more um, and you're not pressured into making this perfect painting uh, you're not you're not judging your painting based on how it may be um, it may be understood or it may be received if, uh, you know how other people are gonna how are other people are gonna judge it or validate it so uh, that to me has been a whole process and I think I think this is all I honestly think it's all connected just the desire to to not fuck up to uh, you know this fear that stems from just making a bad drawing um, I think comes you know, it's, it's very contextual. It's not just, oh, I'm, I'm, I just want to, you know, copy this photograph because um, I don't want to mess up. And people, you know, people usually end up understanding then that that's, you know, that's what, ha that's what happens when you draw from photographs or when you work from photographs. It's that you're avoiding this uh, very direct uh, way of painting. Um, 
But the truth is, you know, you can, you can paint from photographs and if you have been paying attention to yourself and to your process and um, you will be able to translate all the information you've gathered when painting from life and bring it to photographs so much so that, you know, I don't think people would care, you know, and people wouldn't, honestly, I sometimes think people wouldn't even notice, like, if I put two things that I've done, you know, one thing that I've done from photographs and, okay, that's a loud alarm, if I put uh, things that I've done from photographs and I put things that I've done from life, I don't think they're, you know, they would be that much different, honestly, I just really don't. Um, so, I don't know. I think it's um, it's a very skewed sense of of how um, people nowadays are going about um, using the information that is available to them through a photograph. And unfortunately, like I said, unfortunately, I really feel that um, there's way too many people that are just um, going to photographs because they are horrified of of just. Uh, making mistakes and fortunately that's not my case I have fucked up many many times in my life so <laughs> I'm not I'm not afraid to paint I have this um, this very sort of natural sense of being unafraid of painting and it's I think it's been that way it, it, it is that way because I can trust myself because I have done so many paintings and I have painted badly so many times, but I have been willing to learn from those times and that's what makes a huge difference. So, Nicolás, eh, su polla para España y Portugal. Es que España está muy grave por lo que pasó con el técnico, pero yo creo que igual van a ganar. Igual van a salir a, a jugar así impresionante. Yo creo, yo creo. I use my phone for photo reference. Oh, these are, I do, I use my phone always now. I use my phone all the time for my reference. Like, I just, it's so easy to, to use that. Um, do you think you can start recording and saving these little podcasts so I can go back and then later and share them with others? I, I record them for, I mean, I, I use the, um, the default sort of settings that Instagram has for, um, for live uh, videos, and I kind of like them. I know that I could save them as my um, what do you what do they call those? The uh, like a highlight, like a highlighted story. Um, I know I could do that, but I kind of like that they're up for like 24 hours, and it's a one you know, and, and it's the sort of thing that oh you had to be there. I kind of like that. Um, like I said, like right now, I think I'm like at 25 percent, something like that, uploading that that YouTube video, and um, you know, in that channel, there's going to be a sense of of, uh, of permanence in what I you know upload. So you know, you can I invite everyone to uh, to check that channel out, and I'll let you guys know as soon as it's up. So don't worry about it. I, I won't do it right now because I want to make sure that everything's kind of cool. Um, so, so we'll see how that goes. Um, you can find them in YouTube. Yeah, people are putting them there. It's just that I just find it um, a little annoying to uh, be concerned with, um, with recording my screen while I'm working. And that actually eats up my, my memory. Um, so I don't do it. I, I don't do it for that reason. It's just kind of annoying. But um, but if you guys want to do it, that's totally cool. It's totally fine. I'm just saying, like, for the um, you know the purpose of of the uh, channel is to provide you guys with like a little bit. For now, I'm not gonna say it's like a lot better because you know I'd be lying. Yeah, but it's a little bit better. I mean. <laughs> It's it's not like a whole like edited video and really nice. It has an intro and it, there's a song to it. You know, no, I don't have anything like that. Um, I just kind of start. Um, I'm just gonna concentrate on exercises that I want to that I want to do and that I wish people would 
kind of follow. Um, it's going to be kind of linear in a way. So, um, so if people follow those exercises, you know, uh, from the first video to the last, I think there's going to be a progression to them. Um, so it'll be kind of learning about value and eventually color. And then, you know, then about um, kind of picture making, I guess. Uh, because I, I mean, I, I am, I still love to make pictures in the sense that I, um, I love to, uh, for a picture to have a narrative and to have a specific composition. So we, we'll be slowly getting more and more complex as we go along. So that's, that's my intent. So, uh, and, but this, this is a very humble, like this first one I'm going to do is a very, <laughs> very simple, very humble video. I don't want anyone to get way too excited about it but and it has to it's it's it actually has to do with that first little image that i posted um the last one i posted i think in my instagram uh, feed which is that um that very compressed um value scale painting uh those are exercises that i absolutely adore to do so um Hola, ya extraña verte pintar. Ah, gracias, gracias, todo bien. Yo los extrañaba también, sí. Pensaron que yo no iba a hacer nada durante el mundial, no sé, yo estoy seguro. Yo estoy seguro que dijeron, no, este man que va a trabajar en el mundial. Y no, para que se den cuenta. En los días de Colombia, sí, no, no se hace nada. Cuando juegue Colombia, me tengo que preparar psicológicamente. Eh, va a haber mucho nerviosismo. Ahí sí, no vale la pena pintar, eso no, no. No tiene ningún sentido. Es una barbaridad. Incluso creo que eso es como pecado. O sea, si muero ese día, morí en pecado. Entonces no, tampoco. Tampoco. Eh, pero no, cuando no juegue Colombia, podemos, podemos pintar. No pasa nada. Estamos muy contentos trabajando. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but la paleta de hoy... Eh, Camila, la que uso normalmente así gris es titani, blanco titanio, amarillo ocre, rojo cadmio medio, alisarín, eh, tierra de sombra natural y azul ultramar. Entonces muy grisecita, muy sencilla eh, y sharp. So, like I was saying, if, if you guys noticed, I've been doing very kind of singular, uh, I've been taking kind of singular decisions. I go to my palette, which you can't kind of see, you're seeing at least these little kind of blotches of paint up here, but uh, I go to my palette looking for something very specific. I paint that little area in my painting and then I go back. and. Uh, you know, rinse and repeat. That's that's how you paint. Try and never try not to uh, have your hand just kind of dance freely on your on your uh, surface, because it'll forget what it was doing. You know, if if it starts kind of gliding and going to like all sorts of places within your painting, it'll at some point just say, "Wow, what what was I painting? What was I supposed to be painting?" And um, and that's not good. You know, when the hand doesn't remember, it means that the, uh, you know, your brain just wasn't paying attention, and that's not great. So again, very, very slowly, but it's awesome when you have, when you have a um, kind of developed drawing, um, and these are not crazy developed. I mean, these were probably done like five minutes each, 10 minutes each at most, honestly. Um, when you have a developed um, drawing, um, it's really cool that there's enough information there that can give you peace of mind while you're painting, but it's very tempting to just shut off your, bra your brain, your, like your drawing brain and just concentrate on, on color. And the truth is, no, you, you, you can never do that. You always, 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 always have to be on. Like your drawing has to be on all the time. That one doesn't, you know, that one you never, you can never shut down, so. 
Always remember that. It gives you, you know, having that drawing underneath should give you peace of mind, but that doesn't mean that you're done. You know, you're never done drawing. So, no medium? Nope, no medium. These are oils, right? Do you use medium? No, I'm not using medium. I, I've said it before. It's not like, um, um, I am not opposed to using medium. Many times I'll know that I have to use medium if I have to um, approach the painting in very particular ways. Um, but if I can avoid it, I will. That is that 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 I will say. And for these paintings, it, it wouldn't make a lot of sense because I'm trying to concentrate on very direct, very simple ways of understanding painting. And you know, the easiest way to understand painting is just by eliminating, you know, everything that that is kind of foreign to making those um, those very fundamental decisions of of just saying, okay, this is. I'm going to paint this this color that has this shape against this other uh, shape of color, and you know if I get that right, those two shapes of color will describe you know this X form, you know whatever form you're trying to uh, to describe. So I'm always very very mindful of of how tempting tempting it can be to just um, uh, add some medium so you can have a broader range of um, possibilities while putting down paint but my hope is that we can or at least for myself is that I can eliminate as much as you know uh, as as much of the um, sort of filling that paint you know may may have and I know this is sounding kind of weird because some people would say well that's part of paint you know thinning down paint would be part of paint or stretching paint with your medium it would that you know that's that's a natural part of of painting, um, and I guess so. But for me, at least in in at this moment of my life, my career, I wanted to strip painting down to its barest. That this is like bare bone painting, and and the reason I do it is just to um, to see if I get it, to see if I you know if whatever whatever it was that I wanted to do to see if, if I was able to do it uh, concisely and easily. Um, and, and if I'm not able to do it, then I'll, ha I'll you know, very easily recognize uh, where I went wrong, you know, where, where my mistakes um, sort of reside. Uh, because there's not many places when there's very little, uh, when there's ve very little in a painting. Um, the, the cool part about that is that you know it's it's super easy to to spot where you might have gone wrong so that's that's why I'm doing it it's just to um, to push myself to see if if my if my understanding of painting is um, uh, is strong at its most most fundamental so that's that's the reason I'm doing it. Not you know I I also have uh, other reasons like health reasons that I I just simply don't don't enjoy um, you know smelling and being around mediums all day uh, or solvent. Um, so I try to avoid it as much as I can. Um, but you know it's also it's also part of of something I believe nowadays so and something that I'm searching for within my painting so I guess I find that kind of um, interesting too so won't oils degrade paper long term even if it's primed I guess everything like tell me one thing that won't um, oils will degrade anything you know and you could say well you know not you know maybe yours will last I don't know, 200 years maybe? I mean, I'm, for example, I'm judging the uh, paintings, um, and it's cool that we have these as reference, the uh, Toulouse-Lautrec paintings that he did on cardboard. You know, you can, st you can look at those. There's plenty of museums in the world that have a bunch of those. And um, those, I mean, they're, I don't know if they'll stand the test of like time of like 100 more years. But 
you know, they're still there. They still look pretty good. And it was just raw cardboard. Um, probably not as acidic as, as the one that we use nowadays, but it was a raw piece of cardboard. Um, so I don't know, you know, if it's 200 years that these, these paintings are gonna last, I am so okay with that. <laughs> I can't, you know, it would be so absurd for me to just think, to go f farther from that. I just don't, my, I just don't have the personality to do that. And, and people are sometimes concerned, well, aren't you, uh, you're not thinking about your uh, potential buyers and, you know, your collectors. I'm not going to sell these, th this, uh, these sketchbooks. So these are for me. So no worries there. And if, you know, if the day comes that I, that I contemplate selling them, um, I would make sure, like absolutely sure, that the person that would buy them understands that these are not eternal. I mean, it doesn't, it makes no sense. It makes no sense for me to like try and promote that idea when, you know, it was not something that drove these, these little paintings and these little studies. I, I, I kind of feel that I can't be detached from the idea of permanence if I am, you know, if, if I am conscious about it while I'm painting it. And I kind of want to be detached from the idea of, per of permanence because if I am, then I'm going to be willing to treat these as just studies and, you know, have, you know, be super comfortable with them and if my pages stick together then they stick together and <laughs> if I have to rip them apart then I kind of have to do that and if the uh, paintings get um, they get damaged by doing so then they get damaged um, I'm far more accepting of those things uh, now than I was before and I think it comes from I'm trying to get like a fine point with this and I guess it comes from just um, uh, not not caring. I mean, which is very it's it's uh, quite a paradox because I'm not caring, but not caring in the sense that we were taught to care about painting uh, traditionally, but not to, you know I obviously care about what I'm doing. Because I'm taking great care in painting these little paintings. So so I don't know I don't know. People sometimes are are too hung up on, on that. They just, uh, they want to understand painting like, like painting was understood for, you know, centuries. But truth is, um, you know, that's just one way of looking at painting, honestly. And um, in my eyes right now, painting just serves more of a, uh, it's a tool to further understand myself. Um, uh, so in that sense, it's become far greater than I had envisioned it to be. And not, and I just, and not, I don't feel like I, I'm a slave of painting, that I have to obey these rules like, oh, you know, but if you do that, then your paintings are going to fall apart in like a hundred years. Okay. No, but that's like sacrilege. Like that's stupid. Why are you doing that? It, I don't know. It's, it doesn't, you know, it wasn't, it's not my concern right now. It's not. And, and sometimes people would say, well, you're being selfish. You owe it to so many people to have this kind of be permanent. And sometimes my reaction is why <laughs> I, <I've, laughs> I'm painting for myself. I'm, you know, this is for, for just very kind of subjective understanding of myself. It's not, <laughs> there's nothing else to this. Why would anyone else be in this equation but me? Um, but sometimes people hear that and they say, wow, that's so incredibly selfish. And um, I, I don't see it that way. I, I, I honestly don't. Um, uh, and... And I think I could be selfless with sharing this information and having these spaces where we can talk about these things. But I just, I don't, I don't know. I just don't think that it has anything to do with, with painting. Or it's, um, 
or better yet, I think it has to do with painting, but it's um, it's almost tainted by this this um, very classical understanding of painting. So I don't, I'm not interested in that anymore, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, people, yeah, probably the person that buys my my sketchbook if I ever sell it, uh, or my sketchbooks of all, or all these pages that I've done, you know, when working for myself, I'm I. I could bet you that these pages will survive that person, you know, and and hopefully people will will trust that I'm competent in in knowing and that I've done hundreds and hundreds of paintings that are really really well uh, produced. Let's say, you know, they were primed traditionally and they were mounted traditionally and they're painted on surfaces that I know uh, for a fact. And I can say for a fact, because history has taught us that, but that I know for a fact that will, will you know, they will stand the test of time. But, um, so I've done so many of these paintings that I know, I'm, I, I'll know if I'm not being careful. Trust me, like I can uh, identify very, very quickly when I'm not, when I'm being careless with, with the work that I'm doing. Um, there's no there's no mystery to that. It's so easy to know when you're doing something that's kind of stupid. Um, and and I also know how images, uh, how paintings react to time. I can kind of tell. Um, and uh, I've you know in the name of um, of trying things out. I've done very, very stupid things while painting and just to see how surface, how a surface will react or how layers will, will kind of behave one next to another. Um, and, you know, I usually, I can usually spot when, when a painting is, when a painting is kind of telling you, dude, you fucked up. Like this is, <laughs> this is not right. This is not right. Um, uh, and I can sense the, the uh, times where, you know, kind of like the time a painting will take to, to tell you that. And, you know, if, if there's something, if you, if you do something that's really, really absurd, technically, I can kind of have like a timeline of, of when those things will show up. I mean, sometimes you even, you do stuff that it's like so off that in like two weeks, a painting will tell you like, Hey, hey, you know, this was stupid. What you did right here, totally stupid. Um, sometimes it'll take like um, uh, three months. Sometimes it'll take six months. Um, but when an image kind of goes through like a year and it hasn't like substantially changed, um, you, can, you, can kind of, uh, you can kind of tell that there's a stability to it that will hold, you know, and that'll hold you know, as much as it can, as, as you know, if, if you paint on a piece of paper, of course the paper is going to be affected by so, so many, like, variables. Um, but, and, and those you, you know, you can, you can try and minimize those, but you can never, like, wholly control those. So, I know that things are going to happen to the, to these paintings, but I... I've said it before, like, things are going to be, things are going to happen to me as a human being. Um, I just, I find it kind of stupid to think that my paintings should behave differently. And I know people say, well, you know, you should be thankful because that's not what Rembrandt thought. And that's why you're enjoying Rembrandt today. And I get it. I get it. But then I would say, but then, is that it? Like, are we done then? Is that how we're supposed to paint? And, you know, we're not supposed to question anything else? Like, we're not supposed to, uh, to think that painting could be understood differently? Just because people 500 years ago taught us that, you know, this is how you understand the permanence of a work of art? Um, that's how we have to, that's it, we're done? We just have to replicate that forever now, and all we have to do is just speak different things through painting, but 
but you know, pretty much painting will be done because, because they were right. I don't know. To me, that's kind of scary. To be totally honest, like to view, to view the um, the nature of painting so um, simply. To me, it, it scares me a bit that we are not capable of understanding that there is no way painting will ever be seen, even like a hundred years from now, like turn of the century paintings 120 years ago um, not 100 years from now 100 years ago um, we'll never ever I, I, I don't I don't want to say ever ever you know there could be some strange just absurd renaissance of painting in the future that I would not expect at all but but paintings have you know the way paintings are understood by society the way paintings are the intent of paintings, it, you know, it's all changed. The way paintings are respected nowadays, everything has changed. So why should we understand painting, paintings exactly like they were understood a hundred years ago? I'm, you know, we can respect the, the values that the, that, that time sort of um, wanted to emphasize in painting, um, I would be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super for that, for people to, like respecting and, and understanding how paintings were done and the amount of ability and w hard work that it takes to, uh, to make paintings, to make great paintings. That I'm up for, you know, just that has to do more with like the, just the natural respect a painting, a great painting should deserve. Um, but, but aside from that, like, ugh, I don't know, like, we should let it go. And this is me, this is a person who absolutely adores painting, like, this is my life. And this is me just saying, we should, we should embrace this change and understand that we can work within, you know, the, uh, a newer definition of painting. And I don't know what that newer definition is, but you know, I'll I'll be willing to investigate it while I'm painting today, so and while I'm painting tomorrow, so that's it. Cuando saca el libro? No, se demora, se demora porque toca toca terminar. O sea, todo lo que estoy haciendo, todos los ejercicios que hago, lo que estoy escribiendo, todo eso obviamente es eh, Va a, ir, va a ser parte de, de esa publicación, pero pues la idea es que, que me den tiempo para que, para, que, para que eso se pueda hacer bien. Mi, mi intención, mi única intención es que las cosas se puedan hacer bien. Y, y ya, para mí esos proyectos editoriales pues pueden ser muy simples o pueden ser... Eh, o, o, o de pronto, pues bueno, traen sus propias complejidades, pero, pero, pero yo los abordo como, como algo muy, muy importante para mí. Entonces quiero, quiero dedicarle el tiempo y respetarlo y producirlo lo mejor que yo pueda para, para la gente que, que lo está apoyando, que estoy, estoy feliz. Como, yo no quiero, hay veces me siento súper me siento feo como publicitando ese proyecto todo el tiempo, porque no, no sé, los artistas no tendemos a ser buenos eh, publicistas, entonces eh, tiendo como a, a, a tratar de evadir eso para que no parezca que estoy haciendo mucha propaganda, pero, pero nos está yendo súper bien, estoy contentísimo con, con el apoyo que todo el mundo me ha dado, eso es una maravilla. También entendiendo lo difícil que es hacer como proyectos de ese estilo, los proyectos editoriales, normalmente no tienden a ser como tan, tan eh, exitosos en, en plataformas como de, de ese financiamiento como eh, que da la gente, pues, que, que posibilita a la gente. Entonces, estoy muy contento. O sea, en ese sentido y bajo esos parámetros, uf, no, no hubiera podido pedirle nada más a la gente. Entonces, vamos a ver, la idea es como producir algo que de verdad valga la pena, como lo he descrito ya muchas veces, como yo quiero un libro como que sea una, 
una especie de compañía y, y le recuerde a uno, pues de pronto, o, ojalá que compartamos esos valores, pero no los tienen que compartir, sí, sí, o sea, no, no quiero sonar así dogmático, yo no, yo no creo enseñar nunca una manera de pintar, yo, yo, yo lo que trato es como de aproximarme a, a mi pintura desde, desde las necesidades que me... Que me como que me señala mi, propia, mi propio camino, mi propia sensibilidad y, y ya. Eh, y creo que soy muy cuidadoso en tratar de, de sonar mm, respetuoso con procesos de otras personas. Eh, puede que el mío sea muy distinto, pero, pero pues eso es lo que lo hace que sea mío. Eh, pero entonces sin, sin pretender que sea... Tampoco un libro de, de una filosofía del pintar ni nada por el estilo, que siento que eso es como medio pretencioso. Eh, si sí quisiera que fuera como, no sé, como uno de esos libros que, que aporta a la compañía del hacer, o sea, que aporta a ese espacio que todos seguramente tenemos de, de, pues puede que estemos acompañados porque estamos en un taller o puede que estemos solos, pero a ese a ese sitio como que nos pertenece únicamente a nosotros cuando estamos trabajando eh, y, y quisiera como que de alguna manera esa, esa voz y es, que da ese librito se insertara como en esos espacios para que se sienta como una compañía y, y ya, esa, esa es mi, <ríe> la, en realidad esa es como mi gran, gran intención. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'm ever going to stop working and sharing. That's, uh, that's the whole point of doing these things. I think when we do this, um, and, and honestly, I, I don't see myself as somebody who's going to, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with people that do it, but uh, you know how things, that, how many times you do things and they're you know, behind paywalls and stuff like that. I much rather just try and do like a really good job and and have uh, a lot of people following me so that I can create enough content so that I can, you know, probably uh, monetize a, a YouTube channel in that sense. But I don't want to charge people for that. You know, I much rather just have, you know, other people and think that they can promote, uh, um, you know, promote whatever you know, uh, ads they promote with, uh, through, uh, YouTube. And I am actually, <laughs> I actually, um, I'm an ad block, uh, advocate. So, so, um, you know, it's, that's one way to go around the people that, you know, if you don't want to use, if you don't want to see ads in, in YouTube, just get like a really cool ad block, um, add on, and you don't have to even worry about any of those things. Um, I'm, I'm one of those people, so I much rather have, you know, those companies pay for something than have people pay for, for, for content that, you know, should be readily available to everyone. So my intent has always been that to, um, to, to know that, that what drives my passion for working has always been this feeling that I that I had when I saw my teachers work, this kind of fascination. I was in awe of what they could do when I first saw them work. And I was like, wow, this, this is just changing my life like so quickly um, that I want to harness that. I don't think I, don't think I can, <laughs> like, don't get, me, don't get me wrong. Like, I don't think I can have that same effect on people that, that my teachers had on me. But, um, but hopefully I can exhibit the same love for what I do, for that, that they exhibited when I saw them work. So, saludos desde Bucaramanga. Saludos, saludos, saludos. Mi familia es Uribe Santanderiana. Yo, o sea, no voy, a, no voy a decir que nosotros somos Santanderianos porque no, tampoco. Sería, sería, ¿Sería también una mentira? Claro que mi papá siempre decía que él era santanderiano, muy, muy santanderiano. Pero, pero bueno.
So we're slowly getting there. I mean, I'm starting to, to do a little bit of detail that... Um, uh, shout out from Pakistan. Wow, that's crazy. Awesome. Thank you. Um, but I don't want to get too caught up in like little things in this, in this hand. And I know that I, I kind of... I, I realize that these little moments of the hand... They're part of the reason that I was attracted to painting these hands, uh, kind of little gestures in the uh, fingers and wrinkles. And so there's, there's, um, there's minutia that still attracts me from, from these forms, but I don't want to get too caught up in, the, in, in them. So, Nico, ese efecto es el que sentimos nosotros. No empiece, Camila. No empiece. No, no, para mí fue gigante lo que, o sea, mis profesores me cambiaron mi vida. Fue una cosa, fue una cosa pff, impresionante. Pero digamos que eh, yo, yo pude contar con, con el esfuerzo de mi familia y, y pues con becas que me entregaba la, la universidad para hacer mi carrera. Eh, eh, pero, pero viendo hoy los costos de, de mi universidad, pues me, uf, se me hacen como aterradores. Entonces, hay veces digo, wow, o sea, para tener esa oportunidad, para, para que uno se pueda haber afectado con un profesor tan, o sea, con profesores tan increíbles como lo fueron Steve y Max para mí. Entonces, toca tener tanto dinero, o sea, el que no tiene tanto dinero, entonces nunca en su vida va a poder como, como sentir lo que yo sentí. Y, y se me hace que, que eso es muy triste, que esa es, una, oh, esa es una injusticia absurda. O sea, ¿cuánta, ¿a cuánta gente se le está, eh, iba a decir indirectamente, pero no, abiertamente negando la posibilidad de ser un artista maravilloso porque no tiene los medios para para pagar esos espacios. Es, es una de las cosas extrañas que pasa en este mundo hoy en día, pero, pero mmm, no sé, a mí se me hace que, que, que parte de lo que me atrae para, para... O sea, el libro lo que pasa es que, y, y, y digamos, lo, lo bien que me puede ir con el libro también me posibilita generar espacios como estos. Esa es la verdad, o sea... Me da el tiempo para decir, listo, ya no, no, tengo, no, 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 puedo, no tengo que seguir en la universidad dando clases, pero me puedo dedicar como a hacer unas clases que tengan una afectación potencialmente global, digamos. Y global no quiere decir, o sea, no, no quiero sonar como tan pretencioso diciendo eso, pero global en el sentido, por ejemplo, ahorita nos saludó alguien de Pakistán y eso es fantástico. ¿Y por qué alguien de Pakistán no puede ser un pintor increíble, maravilloso, que, 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 que a partir de las pocas cosas que uno le pueda aportar, pues cambie su vida y empiece como a hacer un, un trabajo que eventualmente pueda afectar a, a muchísima gente también? Eh, ¿Por qué no? ¿No? O, 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 o gente en Irán, o gente en Nueva Zelanda, o gente, o sea, gente que, que por momentos sentimos totalmente inaccesible. Entonces, mmm, no sé, se me hace muy bello eso, de, de, de pensar que se tiene esa posibilidad hoy, hoy en día de hacerlo. Se me hace un poco triste que, que esas eh, iniciativas muchas veces se ven, se ven truncadas por, por el deseo de, de, como de capitalizar todo eso, de capitalizar todos esos esfuerzos y entenderlos Entenderlo solamente como, como una opción para generar ingresos y ya. O sea, yo, yo, yo siento que hay una parte humana en la pintura que es preciosa y que puede, puede aportarle muchísimo a muchísimas personas y, y que si eso se hace accesible, pues eh, 